There are some faculty on this campus who would probably not enjoy the fact that I give this advice, but I do it every semester. Ask. Ask for what you think you need. Now, be reasonable. Don't say, like, can I do the final 27 times? It's like, you know, like, be reasonable in your ask, but when you think you need something or something would really benefit you, ask. Because some people will get insulted. I am not one of those people. If the answer works out that, like, no, we really need to have it do that, I'll just say that, and I won't be insulted. So when you have something like that, it's worth asking. The answer is often yes. Surprisingly often. All right, let's talk about this quiz. But John, I came in really late because I was trying to find parking and my dog exploded and everything got in the way and I couldn't get here on time to do the quiz. They'll put your name because you get a couple of points, it's better than nothing. Take every point you can get. Now, we have this reaction. Three oxygens are in equilibrium with two ozones. And we were told that the natural log of the concentration of O2 versus time gives a line, a straight line. And we were told what the slope is, some number. First question, number three was, well, first question, number three, that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, first chemistry question was, what is the reaction order with? Many people know the answer, and that's great. What do you do? What do you look for? Sure. The, the structure of, like, like you were saying, a slope that was a straight line, so it's like, well, if it's describing a graph, look for that. Mm -hmm. If you see a structure that describes things like a slope and or an intercept or a line, you want to look for some y equals mx plus b equation that fits whatever else you were given. In this case, you were given basically x and y. So you have an equation that has time and the natural log of a concentration. Yeah? You also want to look at the form that it puts the O2 So in this case, the natural log. Mm. So more specifically, is there anything that's done to these? Is it like 1 over the time? Now it's just the time. That's going to be x. Is it natural log of the concentration? Yeah, that is natural log of the concentration. And as many of you saw, First order is the integrated rate law that fits this description. Oops. Question the fourth. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, and one more thing is you have one molecule reacting with itself. So when it is right, the physical meaning of first order is you have one molecule basically reacting all, all of its own accord, just by itself, to start the reaction. That's right. And someone noticed that there's a coefficient of three there. So if you're doing rate determining step, then it's a little bit different. Then you can use the coefficient as the exponent. Here you cannot. If you know you're in rate determining step, then you can use that. Otherwise, you've got to work with whatever the data say. In this case, you have a slope for natural log of concentration. That's first order. How do I get the rate constant? Well, let's write out the equation. <clears throat> I got to swoop my T's. I almost forgot. I want the rate constant. I could make this a single variable type of thing and solve for k if I had enough information, but it don't. But I was told the slope. And I'm a big fan of writing y equals mx plus b underneath this. If you can do it without this, like if you can see it, that's fine. Um, but a good strategy is to write this. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I'll stop soon. I'm just compulsive. Uh, I do this. Because then it is visually aligned, and I'm kind of graphical and visual. So if you fall into that category too, this might be a good strategy for you. If not, there's probably something else that'll work. You'll notice I put that box around the negative sign too. So negative k equals the slope. And sometimes I will go so far as to write that. Because I was told what the slope is. So what's k? Yeah, that without the multiply both sides by negative one if you like. Oh, don't forget the units are so right. Units for a first order rate constant. Yeah, per second. How do I know that? 
Yeah, one way to think about this, if you don't, some people just remember the units for zero per second order rate constant. That's fine, that'll work. I hate remembering things. Except for names, I like remembering names. It's about the only thing I like remembering, and redox potentials. <laughs> Nerd, whatever, weird. How do you know that? You need the units to cancel the units of time up here. So what are the units of a log of a concentration? Sort of a trick question. If you take the log of something, the units go away. So this has no units. Log of a concentration has no units. If I'm going to add something to no units, that also has to have no units. So negative kT has to have no units. Time has seconds. K has to have seconds to the minus 1, so they cancel. If you don't like that, you can remember three things. Both ways will work. Please write the rate law. Oh man, but you didn't give us a table of data to spend 20 minutes working with to get one number. I know. What does a rate law look like? It's the form of a rate law. Yeah, exactly. It's the only one with a rate in it, oddly enough. Rate times, rate equals K times the concentration of each reactant. In this case, we only had one reactant. Raised to whatever exponent you like, XYZ, MNO, what, well, don't do O because it looks like zero, but pretty much whatever you want. I, so ordinarily, I'd have a table of data where I could compare rows and sort of divide everything and get that solve for the exponent. Why, why, is the, is the why is the M there? Why is the M there? M is a, sorry, go ahead. Where did, it come where did that come from? I needed a placeholder to say, I know what the rate law looks like. The rate law is rate equals K times every reactant to some exponent. I don't yet know what that number is, so I'm just, I picked a letter and I'm using it as a placeholder. Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what the reaction order is? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, first order. Done. Yep. If you want, you can put the number one. So, that's enough. If you prefer, this is to, to um, like to the scientific community, if they ask you for a rate log, you put that, that's enough. If you also give the number and or units of the race constant, that's also good. So that's not wrong. Um, but this is adequate, I would say. This is sufficient. So I'll tell you why that is in a second. Why is the community satisfied if you're talking to another chemist, or if you read about this, why is saying that leaving K as a variable good enough? Okay. So you define the K. Well, you don't define the K, but you, measure, you do measure it. And it depends on the conditions. How would you increase a rate constant? If you want a reaction to go faster, how would you increase the value of K? Change the ratio. Oh, yeah, Charles. You can increase the temperature. That's the one I'm thinking of. There are other ways. You can also add a catalyst, things like that. Catalyst for temperature will change the value of K with nothing else in the rate law. So if I do this hotter, K will be a different number, but the exponent will still be true. So that's why many people will leave K as a variable, though if, you, if your temperature is constant, then you, want the, then you do want the number. But that's why it's okay to leave it as a variable for now. Yeah, it is what it is. Questions or thoughts? Please. Mm. 
The reason why, let's see, so the reason why this is a positive number, yeah, it's because you had to take the negative of the slope to get the k, and then the form of rate law, the general form of rate law doesn't have a negative sign in it. Um, another way to think about that is a rate has to be a positive number, just sort of by convention. So I need that to work out to be positive. That's a good question. Other thoughts? All right, how are we feeling about kinetics? All right, now we're averaging below thumbs sideways. Is seven name? Yeah. I'm so, I'm so bad, I'm cranked around in reverse. Yeah. Oh, it's tough. It's tough out there. All right. Well, now it's time. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at iLearn here. Um, if you're not in, Alex, now's the time. I will push this one back a little bit. That's good. Um, I, someone asked me, can we, can we just see all the stupid due dates without doing all the work that Alex makes you do even to see when the thing is due? Yeah, sure, why not? So I made a PDF of that. That's there. It's not fancy, but it's just when the things are due now. Of course, that's an update. Phil's going to make me make a new PDF. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, that's fine. Um, let's see. Um, I put up last semester's exams. I haven't added more yet, but I can do that. Uh, I put up the office hours. I've not yet put up the CLC, but I'll do that. And then what else? We are chugging along here. Rate determining step. I actually want to leave that to last. If we don't get to that, then maybe we won't get to that. You know what I mean? Um, but let's do. Let's start with equilibrium. See how far we get. We're gonna have plenty of time to work through both of these next week. Actually, let's go back to that. So we need to get through at least four things today. We need to talk about what an equilibrium constant is, the Chatelier's principle in K. I guess that's two things, but whatever. Multiple equilibrium, nice tables. All right, let's go. Let's So the, someone commented that my question was politely phrased. When my daughter, who's now six, started to talk, I decided I should clean up my language. Um, and that included showing examples of being polite in sort of day-to-day -day conversation. And she's amazing now at it, usually. Um, there should be in the back of the car with Daddy. Can I please have a piece of pepper my gum? <laughs> well, yes, you can. <laughs> um, it usually works. So I started doing this on exams, too. And you can see the transition if you go back to the old enough exams. But then I got a piece of a course eval it said, being, being polite does not help me answer the question. I like, <laughs> just thought it was a good thing to do. Why? Why? At any rate, please give me the equal. You'll hear this called different things, and I try to be clear with it. So if you ever um, want to understand why I phrase it a certain way, do ask. You could say the equilibrium expression. You could say k, and what I'm trying to get at here is I don't want a number, I don't want a value, because that's what you usually look up or measure. But this, you can get just from the balance equation. So please try this. Please write the equation for k.
Okay, I finally did it. Your worst nightmares have been realized. I figured out wireless display and can now bring you the surface to write on the screen. Oh, my God. oh snap. <laughs> Would anyone like to answer this question? We've got one. So Come on, I know I am. I am excited. It's the little things in life, you know? This is where it's pretending I'm I hope this is right. Have you ever seen it? Did we show me I'm illiterate? No. I don't know how to use it, so I can't. Okay. Uh, I figured it out all on my own. I have a PhD in chemistry. Um, is it good? Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Well, what's the process here? Yep. Products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, and I leave out what phases? Solids and liquids. Always. Always, Steph. Yeah. Questions? What questions do you have? That's a good one. Why do we leave out the solids and liquids? Well, yeah, there's, they're not in equilibrium, but why is that? Let's find an example where they're in there, and then we'll talk about why they're not at equilibrium. So let's look at this one that's at the bottom of that slide. This one was in the video. So this is silver chloride, solid, dissolving as its ions. Silver and chloride. Okay. This one looks different than a lot of equilibria because the whole reactant side gets left out, right? Everything on the reactant is only one thing, but it gets left out because it's a solid. What do those brackets mean? Molarity. Yeah, the concentration in molarity. And you don't really, you're not really able to do the concentration of a solid dissolved in a solution because it's not in the solution. So that's the way you think about that. Now, if you're curious about, well, okay, so you have, let's say you have a chunk of silver chloride. What part of it dissolves? Yeah, the outside. Only the surface can dissolve. That does matter, particularly in pharmaceutical chemistry, because the, let's say you take a pill of a drug substance. Only the outside of the pill can ever dissolve. We talk about things like that in aqueous chemistry in my 400 level class that's going on now. So if you're curious about that stuff, we'll see you there. For now, we leave it out. We say, look, it does not dissolve, so I can't give a concentration. We leave out the solids. It's okay. Is that why there are certain pills that they say do not crush or do not chew? What does it do when you do that? It dissolves a lot more quickly. Um, and the effects are then different and usually not what people want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so is that the same with liquids because they're not technically in solution because they are in themselves? Yeah. This is a good question. What about liquids then? Is it the same thing? So for this one, is it the same idea? 
Is it because the liquid water isn't really in solution, it's the solvent? That's probably a good way to think about it. The explanation that most people give I don't think I've ever heard it phrased that way, but that's actually probably better, or at least more succinct than any other way you're going to hear. Um, so you've seen it. What you will usually see for that reaction would be this. This is called the activity, and activity is a strange thing to me still in chemistry. What it is is, how much of that substance do I have compared with the pure substance or a reference point? How much water do I have in water compared with pure water? All of it. <laughs> in a dilute solution, you're very close to that, so the number is about one. We have a $6,000 chilled mirror in my lab because things are expensive in science that measures water activity. So if you want to actually know the number for your solution, you can bring the sample to our lab, we'll measure it for you. For most stuff that you're going to work with, let's say in 111L, it's like 0 0.98, 0 0.99. So they tend to be very, very close numerically to one, and on paper we ignore it. What's the definition again of activity? How much of something you have to Activity is defined numerically as the concentration you have divided by some reference concentration. And for liquids, the reference is the pure liquid. Bless you. So if you have a dilute solution in water, the water is pretty much water. And so you count it as one. What I find infuriating is that any other solute, the reference is one molar. So it's divided, so whatever it is, divided by one. Why? Because somebody decided that 200 years ago, and we have it now. <laughs> we have it. We have it. Yes, now we have it. I don't know why. <clears throat> it's just one. I mean, numerically, it's easy, so that that's not bad. Or equilibrium constant is always a D like For equilibrium constant, what will we do? Are we just writing the equation? We will do more, but this is the the underpinnings, the things that you must get right to do equilibrium, acid base, buffers, thermo, <coughs> electrochemistry. So that's five chapters out of, I think, eight that we do. You need this. So this is like, we will do more, but you got to have this pretty solid. Now, what more will we do with this? You might well ask. Oh, we can do the Chalier's principle. Yeah.
Yeah, because we're going to talk about it at the same time. So we got the Chatelier's principle and Q versus K. The Chatelier's principle is the conceptual version, qualitative. Q is the attempt to get quantitative, although it's still kind of direct. What is Q? Why is it the letter Q? Well, hey man, why is it the letter K? I don't know. Q actually makes more sense because it's the reaction quotient. Products divided by reactants. I can actually deal with that being the word quotient. Why is equilibrium constant capital K? I have no idea. We like K for constant, even though constant is not spelled with a K. So let's write the reaction quotient for that reaction we just did. Yeah, like K, except not. People be ducking their heads. If, I'm, if he doesn't, if I don't look, he won't see me. <laughs> oh, Charles will do. Yeah, right. He'll actually, like physically be crawling from me. <laughs> okay. Are they both supposed to be O two? Oh no, sorry. The second one's O three. You can, you can fix that. Okay. It's just like one, one's going away. That's <laughs> different. Yes, but. Thank you. Yeah. That's better. Good. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's products over reactants. Except. What was so special about K? Products of reactants, you just defined the same thing as two different letters, Q and K. What was so special about K? K is at equilibrium. Yeah, a couple of people ask clarifying questions that are correct. This is Q is for every other case when you're not at equilibrium. Or, yeah, different versions of that. Yeah, so Q, you could be at equilibrium, but you don't know yet. It's just products of reactants wherever you are. You ever hear that really infuriating thing people say to try to calm you down wherever you go, there you are? And you're like, I know that. It doesn't help. I was here before too. No, you never heard that? All right. My favorite is people telling you to calm down when you are. Oh, people telling you to calm down? Calm down. When you're not upset. It's like, now you made me upset. And they get upset I know. About that. It's good. It's good, isn't it? I have a collection of my favorite phrases in English. One of them is actually. This is actually good, which means you thought it was going to be bad. One of them is with all due respect, which is inevitably followed by something disrespectful. With all due respect, that's a terrible idea. Another one is calm down. Okay. Don't take this the wrong way.
If you don't know where to start, give me a subtle give me a subtle heads up so I can come help you. Give me like the auctioneer. It's like <clears throat> I don't actually know. I haven't done that. But how, why would you feel, why do you how do you arrive at that? Uh, because I was going to deal with another it doesn't go It will, but the exponents matter. So you have to plug it in to the Q equation and then do the comparison your thing. Okay. Somebody tell me what to do. Or you can write it yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Proxo reactants. All right, we did that. That's cute. What do I do now? Plug it in. Plug what in? 7.2 times x to negative 5 and then divide it by 2.8 times x to negative 3. Plug it in again.
All right, so I was given concentrations. I was not told whether I'm at equilibrium, so I'll plug them into the Q equation, because I'm not sure yet. I don't know if I'm at equilibrium. All right, then we plug that ugly mess into the calculator. One of my tragic flaws is forgetting, it's not hubris, it's forgetting the exponents. So I double check myself to see whether I put the exponents in there. I got a square on the top and a cube on the bottom, so I'm good. <laughs> What's up? Um, okay, so two questions are: did the que did 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 or did not the question specify we were at equilibrium? And what are what do you do in putting them brackets in there? Those are just numbers. I'm in the habit of leaving the brackets in when I'm putting in concentrations. It, I, it won't matter to me either way. So if you prefer regular parentheses, that's totally fine. This is a quirk of my habits. Um, did the question specify that it was at equilibrium? I, so let's read it. For this reaction, Q equals some number. Maybe you measured it, maybe you looked it up. If you find these concentrations, then you can fill in Q versus K. So we're told about equilibrium, but we're not yet told that those concentrations are at equilibrium. So not yet. If we find that Q equals K, then we're at equilibrium. Q does not equal K. Q is what then K? Greater than or less than K? Q is 0.24 or 2.4 times 10 to the minus 1, if you like. K is a small number. Q is greater than K. I mean, what will, so the question was, what do I mean by which way the reaction will shift? I mean, so the language is usually, will the reaction shift to make more reactants or make more products? And what that is in terms of concentrations is like which will increase and which will decrease. Will reactants decrease to make products? Will products decrease to make more reactants? Well, I look at it like this. Products over reactants. Q is too big. Q is too big to be at equilibrium. So that I have too much what? Too many products. I have too many products. How do I know what? Oh yeah. Okay. So can we talk? Can we say again, maybe in a different way? How do we know there are too many products? I found just purely mathematically, or arithmetically, maybe even, that Q was greater than K. My mantra for the, for like more than half the semester is products over reactants. If the number for products over reactants is too big, the numerator is too big. Or even the denominator is too small, if you prefer. So Q is greater than K. I have too many products. Chelsea. Okay. Pass. Can you tell Q is greater than K if you're better than me at math? Yeah, maybe. So I can't do the cubes and the squares in my head, particularly with exponents. If you can see it, you can see it. That's fine. I'm not a stickler for pathways to get there. For this, this for me, I got to do the calculator work on this one. So one abstraction of the question comment here, this thought training is, can we do like a Q over K? You can. If you're a marine scientist and you're interested in whether, let's say, shell forming organisms are dissolving or not, there's a thing called saturation state. That's a Q over K type of scenario, but we don't typically do it in the, the lab context. So the, you can do that, but we don't do it here. But if you go into marine, you might do it. I have too many products. What do I do? 
Turn on the air conditioning. You could turn on the air conditioning. You maybe you could sell them. But if a reaction is going to shift to equilibrium on its own, products and reactants can intervert, convert rather. I have too many products. Where are they going to go? They're going to become reactants. One of the other ways you'll hear this phrase, or two of the ways you'll hear this phrase are, it will shift to make more reactants, or the reaction will shift to the left. And it is a bit odd to put like left-right toward to a chemical reaction, but what they mean is like we write reactants, equilibrium, and products. So as written, it will shift to the left because that's where the reactants are. Just On an exam or in another context, are either of these answers okay? Yep. Yeah, if it has a particular, so if it's multiple choice, you've got to figure out which way it's in there. But yeah, if you are in conversation with someone in a job interview, let's say, and you give either one of these, you're good to go. How do you know it shifts left? Um, are you okay with to make more reactants, or do you want to talk about that part as well? So that is, are you confused about the jump from yeah, I get it's going to make more reactants. Why do we say left? Or do you want to go one step back to why are we going to shift to make more reactants? Say again? OK, so why are we going to shift? Um, I'm trying to think about how to say this. So I'm dancing a little bit. It's not a good dance, but it's a thing. Um, Chemical reactions will go to equilibrium if you let them. To do that, they're either going to take reactants, if you have too many, and turn them into products, or take products and turn them into reactants until you have basically the right ratio for products of reactants and Q equals K. If you do not yet have that right ratio, if you do not yet have Q equals K, the reaction will, the shift is the verb that's used, but you, you will either turn reactants into products or products into reactants until Q equals K. And that's what you're going to do here. To do that, we have to make the numerator smaller. We have to get rid of some products. And I will usually say to shift to make more reactants instead of shift to get rid of products. That was too many words. Damn it. Is that helpful? A little bit? All right. Let's see if I can come up with it. Yeah. If Q is equal to K, is there a shift? No. No shift. Correct. You are at equilibrium. Equilibrium is dynamic. You are interconverting them, but at the same rate, so you don't observe a shift. Very good. Good, good. What's that? Yeah, if you have it the other way, if you do the numbers and you find that Q is less than K, just shift the other way to make more reactants. Yeah. Exactly. Say again? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you'll shift the other way. Yeah, so clarifying that. Do you ever you ever do that thing in like elementary school or maybe some other time, I don't know. When the alligator eats the bigger number, you ever do that? So like greater than, less than. The alligator's eating Q because it's a bigger number. You ever do that? Yeah. yeah. The alligator eats in the direction the reaction will shift. Uh, now, for that to be true, it's got to be Q first, Q versus K, which it always will be. I won't switch that on you. But that mnemonic only works if it's Q, then K. Um, 
Le Chatelier's principle is usually framed in terms of something you do to a reaction. Reaction was at equilibrium, you make a change. Reaction shakes its tiny molecular fist at you, but it has to react to it. it has to respond. Here's a really broad, not chemical, no balance equation, <coughs> bless you, version of a chemistry question. To a reaction that has achieved equilibrium, you add some products. Which way will the reaction shift in response? Right, left, left. Mm. Mm. You, you add products, wouldn't it? Try to go back to it. If you add products, you now have too many products. So it will shift left or to make more reactants, yeah. That's the one we did before. That's the same one we did before, yeah. Different framing. Not numerical in this case. Is that more the phrasing, the clever guy that can pull? Yeah, this is, this is more like what you'll see in the context of like a question specifically about the Chalier's principle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wants to be equal. It wants to be in balance. Equilibrio. Reaction is like a toddler that has not learned how to use its words. If you push it, it pushes back. A couple of people going, yup. I know that. Word cries. Yeah, then it then it then it cries. <laughs> Questions, thoughts so far. <laughs> Okay, let's go back up to this, which I believe was in the video, and a similar thing is in the textbook, so whichever of those you used, you should be okay to start working on this. That was the most common case, where you add a reactant or you add a product. You can also remove a reactant or remove a product. So let's do this one together, since we're here. We got reaction A, we got reaction B. Will I get more products, more reactants, or I don't know, man, if I do these things? Add a reactant, increase temperature, increase volume.
Everybody got the setup? Got the stuff written down to start? No? <laughs> I speak for all. Yeah, we're good. I do that too. There you go. Please turn to your neighbor. If you don't have one, invent an imaginary chemical friend. Decide together. Reaction A. If I add a reactant, what will happen? And reaction B. If I add a reactant, what will happen? You have an arbitrary seven seconds to confer with your neighbor. Better hurry. All right, I'm gonna count. I'm gonna count three, two, one, and then you're gonna shout out, or or just say, the answer for for add reactant reaction A. Will I get more products, reactants, or don't know? Three, two, one. <laughs> I was, yeah, I don't know what I was expecting. That, that should have been exactly what I was expecting. I don't know. I was expecting to be blown away by a wall of sound, but I don't know why. Reaction B, three, two, one. Uh, yeah, also products. So you're adding two reactants because there are two reactants. So in this doesn't specify which reactant you add. What if I add N2? Shift to make products. What if I add H2? Shift to make products. What if I add both? Shift to make products. This is one of the quirky things about Le Chatelier's principle. You could add one or both, and either way, it will still shift to make more products. Even though, even though you're out of stoichiometry, even though you've unbalanced it, will you still shift? Yep. I don't like that. Yeah, that, that confused me because I feel like. Uh, so yeah. if you don't, if you don't like that, you can do the math. You can do like Q and K and make up some numbers here, and then increase one of the reactants and see if Q is greater than K or less than K, I guess. It will be. Does this ignore limiting reactant? It just adds to it. Yeah, I would say it adds to limiting reactant. When when I when I grew up learning it in sort of the same order y'all did, you do limiting reactant, and the assumption is that everything I put in will get used up until the limiting reactant gets used up. If what you have is an equilibrium reaction. It may not, actually, which is which is an annoying jump to have to make after years of doing that. So limiting reactant still matters, but that matters more when your equilibrium constant is very, very, very large, and pretty much everything you put in goes to products. That's a, yeah, that's a really good, because these are good conceptual questions. The sticky bits of chemistry. I grew up in New Jersey. I know, right? It's funny. But I'm a Californian now, so now I get cold. This morning I woke up, and it was like a frigid mid-60s. So what are, to increase the temperature, I know, I'm just, I'm just theatrics people, come on. So to increase the temperature, I turned on the heat. Okay. Reaction A, if I increase the temperature, what will happen? We don't know. Because we don't know where the heat is. Yeah, not enough information. We don't know which side the heat's on. Whether heat's, We don't know whether heat's a reactant or a product. But, reaction B, we do know whether heat's a, rea a reactant or a product. Heat is a... Product. 
The reaction is what thermic? Exothermic, good. Exothermic releases heat, heats a product. If I increase the temperature, that's like adding a product. This is weird, but it works. You and you can even do stoichiometry with it. So you get what? More yeah, you get more reactants, good. What's that? Good, good. Good, I actually helped someone today. Yes. No, I helped one percent of my class. Yeah, what's up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's go through that again. What I, what I do here is I ask the question, is heat itself, which I understand is not a chemical, but is heat a reactant or a product? In reaction B, it's listed as a product. If I were to tell you, please do the Chatelier's principle, add a product, what will happen? You would say, shift to make more reactants. I have too many products, I'll shift to make more reactants. Increasing the temperature is, in effect, adding heat to a reaction. So it takes a little getting used to, but you can treat it as a reactant or a product to do the Chatelier's principle. Volume is concerned with gases. What do gases do? They expand to fill the available volume. So if you increase the volume, you will favor the side with more moles of gas, because then they can expand. This is one that I like. I have memorized it. I can do it. I have less of a good why internally for this one, but I can do it. So if I increase the volume, if I basically take the cap off the soda, I will shift to the side that has more moles of gas. And by moles of gas, I mean like the coefficients in the stoichiometry. If it's a balanced equation, will they have the same moles? Uh, you should have an atom balance, but you might not have the same moles of, of molecules of gas. So let's look at reaction A. How many moles of gas in the reactants? One. One. What about the products? Two. Two. So products have more moles of gas. So there's a shift to the reactant? No, in this one you shift, you increase the volume, you allow them to expand. Yeah, you allow them to expand and you make more products. Okay, so you should do it So the other ones are shift to the reactant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you increase the volume, you give it more space, it'll take it. And it does so by creating more moles of gas. Remember ideal gas law? People be like, uh, those are three words I have heard of before. Yeah. yeah, that one of the outcroppings of that is that any mole of gas takes up about the same amount of space no matter what the gas is. And that's what you're seeing here. Doesn't necessarily matter that those that NO2 is a smaller molecule. Gases take up about the same amount of space. Which is weird, but it works. Gases just don't give a yeah, gases don't care what you want. <laughs> They don't even ask. <laughs> they just exist. That's right. You just expand to fill the volume. All right, so reaction B, which side has more moles of gas? That's where we're going if we increase the volume. Reactions have four moles of gas. All right, I have two. Hmm. Is that one because of the heat? So why is that one? Can we walk through again why that bottom right corner reaction B increase the volume? Why does that one shift to make more reactants? How many moles of gas? Here it's four. So what you're doing is counting the coefficients for anything that's a gas. And in this case, they're all gas. They don't have to be. But there we got four, here we got two. So if you increase the volume, it'll shift to whichever side has a greater number. In this case, it's four. Mm -hmm. 
Le Chatelier's principle. What is Geltz going to do? The morning of the exam, he's going to go, oh crap, I didn't make the exam yet. Wonder if I still have time to photocopy it. I'm going to get my list of all the outcomes we did. Hint, it's basically the topics of each video. And then I will try and get as many of those as possible. And I go, the Chatelier's principle. That's one of the fundamental principles of chemistry. i got to put that on there. How could I ask it? could give you a table like this. Could do to basically like wordize this yeah, table, right? I could put this in a sentence. Or like you give the Q, you give the K, you ask what happens. Mm -hmm. I could do Q versus K, then I kind of get two birds with one stone because then I got reaction quotient and the shot Lier. That's good. So I could ask about adding a reactant or a product. We did both of those. Could I ask about removing a reactant or a product? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, here we have increased temperature. What else could I do? Yeah, I could decrease it. Good. Um, what about the volume? Yeah, I could increase or decrease the volume. That's pretty much the scope of what you're going to get. You can do pressure instead of volume, but you have to be so careful with the wording of the question that I never do it on an exam. So it does matter. You can go out and read about it if you're going to do that stuff. The, to ask a good question that only has one correct answer, you have to be so careful that I don't bother. So I do volume. Instead of pressure. Decreasing the volume, would that favor the one with less moles? Can you say that one more time? Would decreasing the volume, would that favor the one with less moles, but increasing favor the one with more? Decrease, yeah, so decreasing the volume, squishing the cube of the gases, squeezing on your soda bottle, favors the side with fewer moles of gas. Because they get cramped together and they'd rather be fewer moles. Yep. Other questions, other thoughts? Cool. What else do we say we would do? Okay, we did equilibrium constant. We did Le Chatelier, we did Q. Multiple equilibria and ice tables. Remember Hess's law? Yeah. You don't remember the ideal gas law, but you remember Hess's law? Guys. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, cool. If you flip the reaction in Hess's law, that is, you switch the reactions and the products. Everyone calls that flip, including me. Why? I don't know. You're not actually flipping the thing. But if you do that, reactant tense. So yeah, in Hess's law, you change the sign. You say, I'm doing it backwards. I take a negative delta H and I make it positive. Here it's different. Because remember, the equilibrium constant is products over reactants, whereas the delta S is products minus reactants. So you have different rules. What is the equilibrium constant? What is John's mantra for equilibrium constant? Products over reactants. What if I switch those two? What do I do to the K? Inverse. Yeah. 
1 over k, the original k you had, or k to the minus 1 if you prefer. Say that one more time. So does that mean like say k and then the first reverse like push k? If you did k over the reverse k, would you get one? Yeah, but I don't know. So does that mean like equilibrium constant regarding like the proportion of like out of one and then the form is that so? Is equilibrium constant describing the difference between the forward and reverse reactions? Absolutely. That's the connection between kinetics and equilibrium. Is um, we can we can actually go through that. So let me let me come back to that. But yes, that is a one of the fundamental tenets of chemistry is what you have worked your way towards there. So yeah, we'll do that. That's how you get from rate law to equilibrium constant. Usually we say they're two different chapters. That's the connector. What if I multiply a reaction by a coefficient? I say, hey, I got that reaction, but I need two of them to get the reactions to cancel or whatever I need. What do I do to the values for k? Oh, I gotta make use of Somebody bought this. I gotta use it. Sorry, right? What I said. Yeah. So, okay. Mm. That is not actually what I would do. I knew that. It's okay. So that's what you do for Hess's law. Oh. The trick here is that it's similar, but it does have different rules. So when you do products over reactants, what do you do with coefficients? Coefficients become exponents. That's true here, too. For example, if you multiply a reaction by 2, multiply all the coefficients through there by 2, what do you do to the value for k? Square it. If you multiply them by 3, what do you do to k? Cube it. Cube it. Great. Good, good, good. Good. People have their hand up to ask a question, and I offer them the surface. They go, no, 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 no. Well, I can do this. No, I'm just kidding. What's up? Oh, uh, products of the reactants. Yeah. You got it. So what are you, you going to put? Products of the reactants. Um, no, you have to multiply. So if you add the two reactions, what you do is you multiply the two Ks. People be mad when they learn this. They say, John, I spent all that mental energy learning Hess's law, and you tell me it doesn't work for everything? 
Yeah, this has different rules. Yeah. Parents ever told you you can't have everything you want in life. This is what they were talking about. The one and only thing. This is the one. That's right. You can have everything else. It's not Hess's law. Yeah, Hess's law is not everything. Yes. What a good law. It is a good law. It is a good law. Very easy. Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do? So if I have this and I go, yeah, I really, this is key to pretty much everything in, bi everything in biology. The way almost everything happens is this. Lots of steps. Reaction, 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 reaction. Turn the glucose I eat when I take down an entire box of covered in JoJo's into CO2 so I can exhale it. That's more than one step. Reaction after reaction after reaction. So I think to myself, yeah, I probably should I probably should assess whether they can do this or not, because they're gonna need it. What will I do? Stuff like this. It's like puzzle solving. You gotta figure out what to do to the first two reactions to get them to add up to reaction three. It's like Hess's law. Like yeah, it's kind of like Hess's law, except now you got a set of new rules to deal with. But yeah, otherwise it's very similar to that. Um, I will, unlike Hess's law, I will not say, please go to the table at the back of the book and look through 300 damn equations to find the things I'm just gonna do. <laughs> All right, finally, something in your favor. So what do you do? Yeah, I don't, it's actually kind of hard to give a systematic approach to this. You just kind of look at it and figure out if it already is right or if you need to do stuff. The top one needs to flip. Yeah, top one needs to flip because I gotta have CO two as a reactant. That's what I. That's the first thing that jumps to my eye as well. Or, or water as a product. Yeah, you can also say I gotta have water as a product. So this one we're gonna have to flip it. I know that eventually I'm going to need to add the first and second ones, but I might have to do some flipping first or coefficient thing to get things to cancel. Is that all we need to do here? Yeah, it actually is. Right? So after that, that's all we need to do. Sometimes you will need to multiply one by two or things like that. In this case, that's it. What? Change McKay? How do I, what do you mean change McKay? That's right. So not only do I need to do this to the reaction, I need to do the corresponding function, or whatever you like, to the value for K. Yeah, I need to change McKay. Yeah, in this case it's one over. And some people like to put a new subscript here so they can keep track of which K is which. Some people will put um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't do A just because that's something else that you haven't seen yet. Some people will do minus one, and the reason here is that it's the first reaction, but it's in the reverse direction. Some people will just put K new, whatever you need, to, like the word new. You can keep track of it, or you can just put K. As long as you keep track of it, that's okay. Second reaction we said we could leave alone. Is that one times ten minus fifth? Is that all it is? Describe to me what I should do to get K3. Multiply. Multiply, you multiply, but multiply what things? From the inverse of K1 and K2. Yeah, multiply the inverse of K1 times K2. And you can represent this mathematically however you like. So some people, I wrote here that the value for 1 over the first equilibrium constant was 1.0 1. 1. 1 times 10 to the minus 5th. That, this is like a stepwise yeah. process. If you want, you can leave it here where I haven't solved it yet, but you, but you should arrive at the right answer either way. Mathematically equivalent. Ah, does this have units? Thank you. I meant to talk about this earlier and I forgot. So I'm glad you brought that up. Equilibrium products and products over reactants, they all have to go in with units of yeah, molarity, <laughs> brackets. One of the infuriating things about chemistry is that you can have molars over molars and all that. Equilibrium constants have no units. Same with Q, same with the uh, reaction quotient. Why is that? You might justifiably ask. Because they're supposed to be activities, and activities have no units. Remember the curly brackets I did real briefly? Molarity is an approximation for activity, which has no units, so whatever units it has, we just drop them for equilibrium constant. So no units is actually correct. I had to drop that up. What can I do differently? I could, I could not give you the overall, but for this I probably will. So in, in real life you might not have the overall. For this we, I think we will, because it's easier to set up a problem solving, like set you up to figure out what to do if you know where you're going. So I could do that, but I won't. You may give us uh, algebra equations or... Um, more yeah, more equations to do stuff, or more like more equations to uh, say if H two wasn't a gas to make H two a gas, or what, something like that. Yeah, I guess I could increase the complexity of the chemistry. I could have multiple equations, but probably it won't be a whole lot more than these. 
Yeah, so, so revisiting how we got this answer, we recognized we had to do two operations here. We had to do, we had to flip the first equation. Okay. When I flip an equation, I take the inverse of k. Okay. And then the second thing we had to do was add the now flipped first equation and the second equation. The original one? The original number, the original second equation. Okay, the original second. So I have to add the flipped first equation and the second equation together to get the overall. When I add two equations, I multiply the equilibrium constants. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, just so I know, like, you might have us multiply the characters by coefficients. Yeah, the other thing that is not here, that is very much on the table, is you needing to multiply one or more, but probably one, of these equations by a coefficient. If you multiply the equation by a coefficient, what will you do? Take it to that power. Yeah, raise the equilibrium constant to that power. That's um, the scope. Could you also have us do this and then use the k we find in a different equation? Different question? Could could I have you do this and then take that value for k and go use it somewhere else? I have done that less and less over time. These like multi-step problems. I do some of that on the exam, but not a whole lot. Do you have a for that? Yeah, so you could justify multi-step things and needing to get them right at each step by saying that's what you will do. Or you could justify saying I should assess individual learning outcomes one at a time. So I kind of strike a balance. Okay. So could I give you K1 and K3 and ask you to find K2? I could, but I don't but I probably won't. So, the, so the, the corollary question was, does the algebra work the same way? Yes, it does. But I probably won't do that because it's not very real life. I don't think. Maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah. So say we're multiplying the second equation by 2. Yep. Then would that become 1.4 times 10 to the 7 plus 2? Nope. Or times 2? New. The whole thing, or, the whole thing, the whole thing be, goes up to the second. Would be square. Yep. Be square the whole thing. So oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when would you multiply the reaction by a coefficient? I think I'm going to have to come up with an example. Can I do that and bring it for next time? Yeah, let's do that because it's going to take me time to get it and make it one that doesn't suck. So let me make one that's reasonable and then we'll do that together next time. I like that. Somebody else had a thought right question. All right. It's a shame everybody has left because this is the most exciting part of Chem 111. Not the, not the problem solving, it's something else. Breaking the ice. Breaking the ice is good, but it's not that either. What does ice stand for? In an ice table? There are three problem solving, I guess I would say strategies or tools that come up over and over again in Chem 111. Get the single variable by itself, like solve for x. Y equals mx plus b, and can I analyze like, okay, you told me what the slope was, we did that for the rate constant earlier. And ice tables. These are the three main things that you will do to get a numerical answer. There's a couple more, almost always one of these three. So this shows up again and again. Here's the challenge. There are very few opportunities for extra credit in Chem 111. One that no one has ever actually achieved is this. If you get vanilla ice, you do something with ice ice table, you will get extra credit. What? That's right. If you track down vanilla ice, who is presumably like working at a McDonald's in Miami, <laughs> and get him to like, make a video or tweet at you or whatever the kids are using Yik Yak is dead, right? Whatever the kids are using these days. You know, right? TikTok, that thing? No. I used, to, I used to make jokes about Snap Yak and Yak Chat, and then that wasn't funny, TikTok and now I got to come up with new not funny jokes. At any rate, if you get vanilla ice to interact with you about ice ice tables, you will get some extra credit. The closest we've gotten so far was two semesters ago, 
So if I got iced tea, not no ice, but iced tea, to like a, I don't even know what it was, it was an Instagram direct message or whatever, but like a comment asking him about ice ice tables and he liked it back at that point. That was ice close. Tea is an ice tea. That doesn't count. I'm, it's so close. <laughs> what if the tea stands for table? Ever, so the other, the, the other, table. shouldn't, what, two questions. Shouldn't that count if you get iced tea? Yeah, it probably should. Second question is how much extra credit? We'll see. We'll see how good it is. If he makes a video, that's worth a lot. <laughs> if he likes your message, yeah, that's worth something. Yeah, I don't know. We can talk about it. Show me the results. Ice cube might be worth something. Yeah, that would be good. Here are some practice problems. What is the point of this? The point of this is reducing variables. Sometimes you've got too many variables. I don't like it when I have too many variables. I like one variable because I know what to do with that. That's what this is for. And you may have done this if you watched the video. and You may have done something similar if you read the textbook. But you will do this and you will say, John, I, you, you're going to put this on the exam because you always do. You might not say that because you might not know that. But I'll tell you. I always do. So I'll put this on the exam. And you will say to me, John, I, did it, this is unreasonable, man. You cannot give me a question on an exam when you only give me one instance to practice with. And I will say, that's true. Where will you find more practice? Alex. Alex? Discussion, Discussion worksheet. Yeah, YouTube has some, but those are the two main things that I would go to. I would do the Alex work, and I would do the discussion worksheet. What else would I do? Oh, John, I would go to last semester's exams for practice. And I would go to the D-typo version. <laughs> Life is hard. Of exam one. What's that? Yeah. So this is a score where if you use a screen reader, this is how well it will work with a screen reader. Oh. Poorly. That's how well it will work with a screen reader. So if this is an issue for you, please tell me and we'll get it fixed ASAP. Otherwise, this is it will be fixed, but not today. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't actually know what that one is. Yeah, you can do Khan Academy. We keep joking that I should make the John Academy spelled like that dude spells his name, but I'm busy, you know. I'm looking at a practice. Hey, that's the thing we did. I'm looking at this practice exam, and I'm going, oh, yeah, these are things. These are things we did. How will I know when I have reached a practice problem for ice tables? There will be a table. There might be a table, but there's actually often not. What words do I look for? Ice. The initial? and or change and or equilibrium. Usually initial is your cue. Let's keep going. There's a table, but that's rates. Banana. Banana. Nobody put banana. It was wrong, so it's just as well. If I didn't know, I would put banana. <laughs> Oh, snap. I scrolled all the way to question 16. For this reaction, we don't even know what it is. KQ equals some number if you set up a reaction with initial concentrations. That's the ice table question. I know, right? So next time we'll start with this, and we'll start with a multi-step reaction where we need a coefficient. I'll send you an email later with more. Thanks, y'all. What's up? Hang on, hang on.